Hi! Good morning everyone! My name is Arlene Minorca and today I'm going to discuss about the physical education, the physical wellness, and the physical fitness. So, ano pang hinihintay natin? Simula na! Physical education is an important segment of general education which aims to contribute to the development of the learner through participation in selected activities. It provides opportunities to acquire lifelong skills that are essential to physical, mental, social, and emotional development. In other words, the physical education develops the student's competence to take part in a range of physical activities that become a central part of their lives, either both in and out of the school. The primary aims of physical education vary historically based on the needs of the time and place. Often, many different types of physical education occur simultaneously. Some intentionally and others are not. And most modern school system claim their intent is to equip students with the knowledge, skills, capacities, and values along with the enthusiasm to maintain a healthy lifestyle into adulthood. Some schools also require physical education as a way to promote weight loss in students. Activities included in the program are designed to promote physical fitness, to develop the motor skills, to instill knowledge and understanding of rules, concepts, and strategies, and also to teach students to work as a part of a team as individuals in a wide range of competitive activities. There are four types of objectives in physical education. The first one is the physical development. Through carefully selected physical education activities, an individual who participates actively will develop and maintain good health and high level of physical fitness. The acquisition of physical skill can motivate an individual to participate further in physical activities. Hence, healthy growth and development of each learner will be enhanced. In this part, the physical exercise is a very important part of life to keep us fit and healthy into our old age. People need to develop physically by developing muscles, by toning and strengthening them, and also develop cardiovascular fitness for healthy heart and lungs. The second objective is the social development which provide opportunities for the acquisition and practice of desirable social traits necessary for adjustment to happy living and to the social life in general. Some worthwhile traits are 1. Friendliness 2. Cooperation Respect for the right of others Good sportsmanship Good leadership and followership And last one is honesty and group competition. Students always remember that social development helps people to develop bond with others, particularly while participating in the team sports. The third one is the emotional development. The informal nature of physical education offers opportunities for the development of expression and emotional traits needed for emotional mastery like self-confidence, self-control, self-reliance, courage, determination, and the personal discipline. Did you know, learners, that this one can be a form of therapy for individuals? Using up unused energy can help release stress and tension. And the sense of achievement after completing a physical education session can also boost the self-esteem of an individual, particularly after performing well in competition or simply reaching a personal goal. The last one is the mental development, wherein it highlights the development of mental capacities of an individual while learning mechanical principles of underlying movement. So basically, it is the construction of mind activity such as thought processes, memory, problem solving, and decision making as well as overall intelligence. 
If we have the four objectives of physical education, we also have the four types of development in physical education. One is the organic. In its simplest explanation, it is uh, the end results of training process that achieve physical power for the individual. The second one is the neuromuscular, wherein it is essential to the movements of our body, the control of posture, as well as our breathing. The third one is the interpretive development wherein it is the training that helps an individual to make judgments and interpret the situation correctly. And the last one is the emotional development wherein or makes the individual emotionally balanced and it tells us on how to control our various types of emotion such as anger, pleasure, jealousy, fear, loneliness, and more. After discussing the meaning of physical education and its objective and the four types of development, let's have here the physical fitness. According to this, it is the ability of an individual to perform one's daily activities efficiently without undue fatigue, reduces the risk of heart problems, and with extra serve in case of emergency. Oh, learners, um, remember that the physical fitness involves the performance of the heart and lungs as well as the muscles of the body. Physical fitness has two basic components. The first one is the health-related component that can be defined by how well the body performs in each one of the components of physical fitness as a whole. In health-related, we have here the cardiorespiratory endurance. It is the ability of the heart and lungs to function efficiently and effectively over a prolonged period of time. An example of this would be the jogging, cycling, and swimming. Second is the muscular strength. It is the ability of group to contract against a resistance. And an example would be the branch press, leg press, or bicep curl. The push-up test is most often used to test the muscular strength. The third one is the muscular endurance. That pertains to the ability to continue selected muscle group movements for a prolonged period of time. And an example of this would be the cycling, the step machines, and elliptical machines. As well as the sit-up test that moves often used to test the muscular endurance. The other one is the flexibility. The functional capacity of a joint to move through a normal range of motion the muscular system is also involved. And the most used example to this is the sit and reach test. And for the last one, for health related, we have the body composition. It is one of the new attributes in physical fitness components. It refers to the relative distribution of lean and fat body. Um, this body composition can be measured using underwater winging, skin folds, and bioelectrical impedance. The second component of the physical fitness is the skill-related fitness, wherein it includes balance, coordination, agility, speed, power, and reaction of time. Okay, number one is balance. Balance is the important in all kinds of sporting situation, most notably in gymnastics and ballet, but also contact sports where having a good balance may prevent you from being tackled to the floor. Second is the coordination where it is the ability to integrate the senses with muscles so as to produce accurate, smooth, and harmonious body movement. And an example of this is the hand-eye coordination in racket sports and the coordination to the use of opposite arm and leg when sprinting. Third is the agility. It is the capacity to change the direction of the body quickly and effectively. 
Agility is common in sports such as football, badminton, or tennis that the players are moving around the court quickly to reach the shuttlecock or the ball in time. The fourth one is the speed, where it is the ability to move one's body from one point to another in the shortest possible time. Okay? Speed is not always about how quickly you can move your whole body from A to B. It also relates to body parts. For example, when playing golf, the speed of your arms and the upper body in creating the swing are vital in driving the ball over a long distance. The fifth one is the power and it is sometimes confused with strength. Um, learners, Enable you to avoid the confusion, always remember that when we perform a task as quickly and as forcefully as we can, the result is the power. That is the main keyword of this. And for the last one is the reaction time. It is the time required to respond or initiate a movement as a result of a given stimulus. Example, the most obvious being responding to the gun at the start of the race. A goalkeeper saving a penalty. And a badminton player reacting to a smash shot. If the physical fitness has the basic components, it also has the specific one. But, learners, I hope you learned something from our discussion earlier because most of the terminologies here in this part is already discussed. So, anyway, let's begin. Um, the first one is organic vigor. Refers to the soundness of the heart and lungs, which contributes to the ability and resist disease. So, it refers to eating a healthy diet and getting exercise in order to make your organs strong and the mental and physical strength which can be obtained through diet and exercise. As I've said earlier, most of the terms here are already discussed. So now I will be giving you its main keywords for you to understand and remember. For the endurance, take note for the capacity to bear or last long in a certain task without undue fatigue. While for the strength, the capacity to sustain the application of force without yielding or breaking. For the power, it is the ability of the muscles to release maximum force in the shortest period of time. For the flexibility, um, take note for the quality of plasticity. For the agility, um, ability of individual to change direction in space with quickness and lightness of movement. For the balance, control organic equipment. Speed, make successive movements of the same kind in the shortest period of time. And for the coordination is the ability to integrate the body parts to produce the smooth motion. And for the last topic, we have here the physical wellness. Physical wellness is the positive state of well-being and capacity of an individual to design personal fitness program for improving and maintain optimum levels of health. Meaning, physical wellness consists of recognizing the need for physical activity, healthy food and sleep, as well as preventing illness and injury or managing chronic health conditions. Okay, after its um, definition, let's talk about its benefit or health benefit of physical wellness. So, the first one is looking good. It is containing or having the good proper nutrition, good posture, and good body mechanics that can help you to look at your best. The second one is the feeling good. Of course, after looking good, we should feel good. In this part, student, you can resist fatigue, are less likely to be injured, and are capable of working more efficiently. The next one of the health benefit is enjoying life. According to this, life is more enjoyable when you engage in the regular physical activity. 
and of course it result in physical fitness the key to be able to do more of the things you want to do and the last one is meeting emergencies a fit and active person has the capacity to help or assist other people when they need help in other words these physical activities help us to become a productive and effective one in order for us to help other people and society as well as ourselves to be better so class through this video lesson i am hoping that you learn something about our discussion which is the physical education the physical wellness as well as the physical fitness so once again my name is arlene minorca and i am your pre-service teacher for today if you have any violent reaction or question about our discussion just dm me on my facebook account arlene torres minorca and we're going to have a solution about that so thank you and god bless us